Welcome to another episode of Destroying Flat Earth Arguments. So in this series, we go through a load of popular flat earth arguments and completely obliterate them. Now, if you want to see the full playlist, make sure you click the banner in the top right corner. But without further ado, let's get into it. So firstly, a big argument for flat earthers is that we can see the moon from China and the United States at the same time. Now, this is a very interesting one because it's a flat earth argument that's actually true. I know, shocker, but bear with me. But also, it's an observation that's not really that incredible if you live on a globe, which we do. So here we can see that the moon is in direct line of sight to both countries. I mean, that alone is more than enough to move on to the next point, but we'll actually still dive into it a little bit deeper. When we actually put this onto a map of where we see daylight and nighttime on our planet, we can see that it's sunrise for one country and sunset for another country. Also, one has an evening moon and one is visible in the morning. Now, it took me about 15 seconds to find this on Google, and this isn't just a cartoon as many flat surfers claim it is. Go outside and look outside this map which is exactly what we see in the observable universe. Next, we have the argument that we never actually went to the moon. Now, this deserves its own separate video, but I want to bring this part of the video down to a social level. I've seen a lot of flat earthers commenting about an interview with Buzz Aldrin. In this interview, this little girl asked Buzz Aldrin why we didn't go back to the moon. And Buzz Aldrin comments, that's a big question for a little girl, and he has the same questions. And he essentially says that the answer is basically, we just didn't. Not that we didn't go in 1969. Now this interview is 17 minutes long and Buzz Aldrin then goes on to explain that one of the main reasons is to do with money. Throughout this whole interview it's very clear that Buzz Aldrin was getting a little bit confused to some of the questions he was being asked and it seems like Flat Earth is here are trying to take advantage of the fact that he's an older man. Also Buzz Aldrin has a history of trolling people about the moon landings. In a few interviews he said that they were fake and it's very obvious he's trolling. Like this whole segment saying how they swapped suits etc. The problem is, is flat earthers will hear whatever they want to hear. This is a good example of confirmation bias, a cognitive bias which makes you lean towards information that confirms what you want to hear rather than necessarily what is true. Now let me just give you a hypothetical. If NASA spent hundreds of millions of dollars faking the moon landings, if it was one of the biggest conspiracies to do with the shape of the earth, if every single person at NASA that deals with anything to do with geometry, the shape of the earth, rockets, whatever it might be, if all of these people are involved in the biggest conspiracy that we've ever seen in history, this clip wouldn't exist. Now, one of the next things is one of the funniest, in my opinion. A lot of comments I see from flat earthers tend to be from a place of complete, utter confidence. Now, not to poke fun unnecessarily, but this is the exact definition of the Dunning-Kruger effect. The more people seem to think they know about topics, the less they actually know. A lot of these comments are people making statements that can be proved scientifically with any experiment. And no, you don't need to be a scientist to do these things. You can carry out this own research at home. The main problem with the flat earth community is that any evidence that doesn't support what they believe, as we spoke about earlier with confirmation biases, they throw this evidence out the window because they choose not to trust anything that doesn't support what they already believe. Next, we have flight paths. When flat earthers attempt to depict flight paths on a flat earth map, and not many do, but they often don't make a lot of sense. Some flights entirely fly over water in real life, but on the flat earth, they would be passing over land. And of course, the same applies vice versa. But then we also have flight times. Now, there's a link below to the full test and explanation of this, but using flight times and distances and scale, we can see that flight times on a flat earth are dramatically different to what we actually experience in real life. That alone shows that the flat earth model doesn't work. Now, some flat earthers try to explain this away with jet streams. But that's actually also incorrect, because the return flights would be completely different to the flights out of these locations, which they're not. But also, the planes would speed up in the jet streams. Now, when planes capture a tailwind, they do actually speed up, but not by 40%. Now, I don't know of any commercial Boeing or Airbus aircraft that are currently flying at Mach 1 today. And if there were any, we would know about it. Now, the next argument is that the Earth hasn't been photographed. Now, this is one that I've seen an awful lot. I'd say it's probably in the top three points that are raised by flat earthers. If it's real, why don't we have any real photos of it? And we do. We have hundreds, thousands of real photos of what our planet actually looks like. But the problem with that is that flat earthers call it fake no matter what. In fact, I would put good money on the fact that you could send a flat earther up into space, they would look out the window of the spacecraft and they'd say, 
well, that's just a screen. It's CGI. It's fake. Then they're trying to actually step out of the spacecraft. Tell me I'm wrong. Then the next argument we have is that there's no globe model. Now, this is one that I get an absolute ton of in the comments. Whenever I ask the Flat Earth community to present a model that explains tides, the sun, the moon, a 24 hour sun in Antarctica, the reply I usually get is that Globers have no model. Now, Flat Earthers, for some reason, seem to think that a model has to be a Home Depot thing that you go and build in your garage at home, whatever it might be. That's not what a model is. A model is a set of criteria, rules and calculations that can explain what we see in an observable universe. Now, the model itself is technically pointless. The model is just a good way to showcase what we see, but also it can be the basis of hypothesis. Now, there's not really much that a globe can teach us now about the Earth because we've done a hell of a lot of research to come to the conclusion of what the Earth really looks like. But some good proof that the globe model does work is, for example, the final experiment, that trip down to Antarctica. Now, before that trip down to Antarctica, we were able to predict where the sun would be, at exactly what time, at exactly the elevation of it. Meanwhile, flat earthers couldn't even predict the sun existed at all in that location at that time. And we knew all of this stuff because we have a working globe. And you can call all of these websites cartoons, but at the same time, you could call the AE map the cartoon too. And the more problematic thing here is that the final experiment wasn't the first trip to Antarctica. People have been going for a very long time. The rest of the world knew that, Flat Earthers somehow didn't. Which is another thing that not just proves Flat Earth is wrong, it proves of the inability to accept and receive and process information. Now, Flat Earthers may be watching this getting quite angry right now, but tell me I'm wrong. You denied something which was provable fact, which has since been proved. Now, next we have that Globe Earth is a cult. Now, I recently did a video explaining how Flat Earth is a cult, and I went through the 10 reasons why Flat Earth is a cult. Now, it's very funny, actually. I had three Flat Earth YouTubers, including Nathan Oakley, respond to this video, and none of them included the first five points because the first five points directly relate to these Flat Earth YouTubers and directly debunk their ideology, philosophy, etc. Now, in response to this, a lot of Flat Earthers have said that the globe Earth is a cult. Now, of course, I make videos about the globe and saying that Flat Earth doesn't exist. But for 99.9999% of the population, they don't really think about the globe. They don't think about the shape of the earth. They're not bothered. They go to work, they go about their daily life. You know, they go to the shops using the GPS on their phone which wouldn't work on a flat earth. They use their phones and technology to just scroll through TikTok, which by the way, none of that would work if the earth was flat, but they don't think day to day about what the shape of the earth is. However, flat earthers are always in discord chats, in communities. Their names on YouTube are directly linked to conspiracy theories that involve the shape of the earth. So saying that globe earth is a cult when there is no such thing as a real globe earther, there's flat earth and then there's normal people is a very interesting thing to say because when I've asked flat earthers to substantiate how globe earth is a cult they just say things like we're sheep and we follow what the government says and all, all of this sort of stuff and um doesn't really make any sense because none of the 10 points that make up a cult apply to people that believe the globe exists because it does thank you so much for watching today's video if you did enjoy please make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for part three